Hola, Hola bon dia. dia. We're getting closer to finishing our guest room, so we should have it completed by next week's video. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> there was more prep work to do before we could paint, so I was busy mudding and parging. And meanwhile, I got the first coat of wood stain on the bed frame. On the bed frame? Yes. Really? Yeah. Hello, Dracula. So it should be finished at the same time as the paint for the room. Cool. And we went to Viseo again, so you'll see part of a bathtub reglazing job. Yeah, it's probably going to be part one of two in a bathtub reglazing job. And both of us keep hearing something rooting around outside our bedroom window in the middle of the night. And it's not one of the cats. So make sure you stay tuned to the end to see what our mystery critter is. It's me. <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> I finally got a picture of it. I wandered around outside at like 1.30 in the morning and I got a picture of it. So stay tuned and see what it is. <laughs> that look of concentration. Slight change in plans. We thought we were ready to paint. So we have the drywall ready and the lime washer removed. But this top section needs to be parched so that it matches the parging on the wall. So, and we have to remove some of the overhang from the cement slab above the bathroom because it is not even. So today Grant is going to parge both of the sides. So one block worth. And then, oh, this is hard to see. It's a little better. So this wall here, we're going to leave until tomorrow or possibly the weekend. But we have to remove the last piece of wooden trim. And we've decided to redo all of the wiring for this room as well, so that everything is completely done before we start painting. So a little bit more prep work, but that's fine. So this is what happens when we try to work. Grant got the bucket out so he could mix some cement. And then these two decided it was a cat bed. So Rocky and DJ are now hanging out in the cement bucket. Hey, hello monkeys. Really? Is that yours? Talk in the microphone? I think Rocky's not bigger than DJ. His this head's is, bigger. This is Rocky, no? Yeah. This is DJ. Yeah, that's DJ. DJ's head is smaller, but his body is a bit fatter. Hey, DJ, what's this? Trying to get the microphone? Now that we have removed the cats, we can start mixing the Roboco. So we decided instead of using cement or a mortar mix for the walls, we would try the Roboco. It's already pre-mixed with the sand and everything, so you just add water. The last batch of sand that we got is very coarse, so I figure this is going to be a lot easier than trying to sift the sand and, yeah, still ending up with some bigger little bits of gravel in there. 
So you can see the parging is finished on that top little section here, just to even out the wall on both sides. And we have yet to remove the wooden trim on this side here. That will be done tomorrow and Monday, removing the wooden trim, removing the light fixture and redoing the wiring. So soon we'll be ready to paint. There you go. Because I'm sanding curved edges, I decided to use a scrap piece of bamboo as my sanding block because it doesn't make sense to sand something curved with something that's not curved. Something, something that's square? Square, yeah. <laughs> so if you want curvy edges, you need to use a curvy sanding block. You're a square. No, I have the curvy edges. The weird curvy edges. Like a circular. No? Look, it works really well. So I've been working on sanding the headboard. I didn't sand it well enough before I used the washing soda and I actually missed some areas altogether so I wasn't paying enough attention. I'm not bringing all of the legs down to the wood. I've decided that the more rounded areas, so this section at the top, this section here, and possibly the whole bottom portion of the foot I'm going to do with chalk paint. And I'm going to do the detail on the sides as well as the detail on the main part of the headboard in chalk paint. And then the rest will be done with wood stain. So all, all of those areas, I just need to smooth out. Um, some of them have like chips and I want to scuff the varnish up a little bit so that the chalk paint can stick better, but I don't have to bring it down to the wood like, like this bottom portion of the leg here. It's quite easy to sand down and I think it will look nice to have a few different sections on this piece, uh, just the wood stain, and then the more detailed portions in chalk paint. So that's what I'm working on. And just trying to get into all of the corners so we get a nice clean finish. What you doing in here? I decided to do the first coat of wood stain on the headboard. So I'm using the smaller brush to go around the detail on the sides here as well as the detail on the main part of the headboard because those parts are going to be done with chalk paint. And next time I do a combination of paint and wood stain, I'm going to make sure that I buy the gel wood stain so that it's easier to control where it goes because the regular one tends to bleed into the design. So I'm doing my best not to get the wood stain in the areas that I'm doing with chalk paint, but yeah, it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm wearing the apron for cooking. You're wearing my cooking apron. Sorry. That's the only thing I wear when I cook. <laughs> well, I was already dressed and then I decided to do this, but I don't want to get wood stain on my clothing, so oh, I well then, wear an apron. And then you should just take your clothing off and wear the apron. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah, but I didn't want to get undressed and then get dressed again because I'm lazy. Mm -hmm. So there's that. I found a faster, slightly more accurate way of doing this. As long as I don't have too much of the wood stain loaded on the on the paintbrush, I can go in like this. So instead of trying to be accurate with the tip of the paintbrush, I'm just going along with the side. You can overhang 
and it's only getting paint as far as the edge. So that is a lot easier than trying to be accurate with the tip and getting it lined up properly. <laughs> I managed to get a first coat on the side rails on the front of the headboard and most of the footboard. You can see it brought the grain out really nicely. I think I said in last week's video that the wood stain is a little darker than what I was hoping, but it looks nice. It gives a nice warm color and brings out the grain really well. So once this dries, I can turn this around and put a coat on the back of the headboard as well as the back of the footboard. So most of the footboard I was able to do, it's just this, this one piece going across that needs to be done on the back. And it will likely need a second coat so that it matches the nightstand. But that is the progress so far. If you guys like what you've seen so far and maybe have found it informational or at the very least entertaining, please give us a like. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And sharing the video with your friends helps as well. And we like reading your comments, so please leave us a comment and we'll be sure to get back to you. All right. First things first, let's get this drain out. So anytime you're refinishing the glaze or epoxy on a bathtub, you want to remove the drain because if you don't, that is your weak point. All right, next we want to remove the overflow. So there we go. Now the reason that you want to remove the overflow and the drain is because when you're reglazing, you want the glaze to go all the way to the bottom edge here so you get a complete seal as opposed to ending where the edge of the metal drain is because that creates a weak point. This is where your new enamel is most likely to start chipping and peeling and then also water can get underneath and create rust. So you see a very distinct line here where the metal drain sat when they reglazed it the last time. And I haven't cleaned this where the overflow was, but you can see a ring where it sat. And I can actually feel a ridge where the new enamel sits higher. So I finished scuffing the surface of the bathtub with sandpaper and you can see that I have blocked the drain with a piece of sponge. So now we're ready to start using the paint stripper. So you can see all of the paint bubbling already. So the paint stripper is working well. It's working fairly quickly. 
So the sections that are bubbling, I'm going to start scraping those off now. This is where we're at so far. So I underestimated how much paint stripper I would use. I used the entire uh, 500 milliliters already. So I went and bought another one. All right, so I finally removed, I would say 95% of the epoxy. There's a little bit along the bottom, like the sides here, and a little bit on this side as well. And if you look at the curve of the bathtub there, you can see that it's still glossy. That means that the original enamel was not etched. So you can either do that chemically with, uh, I believe it's called hydrofluoric acid, or you can do it mechanically with sandpaper. I have pretty much had enough of chemicals today working with the paint stripper. So I'm just going to use sandpaper to scuff the entire surface of the bathtub and remove that shine that you can see on the original finish of the bathtub. All right, I am not finished, but I'm done for the day. I've spent over seven hours working on this. I did two rounds of paint stripper, and then I worked up from uh, 80 grit. I'm currently working with 150 grit, and then tomorrow I'll finish off with 180 grit sandpaper. So this is our view this morning. It's a nice cool morning. Well, I finished sanding the entire surface of the bathtub. So I'll give you a close up of how it looks so far. All right. So the next step, I need to vacuum all of the dust and then we need to clean it. And then hopefully I have eliminated all of the top shinier coating of the glaze from the original finish. Although, right along this top edge here, looks like I need to hit it a little bit more with the sandpaper. All right, the bathtub has been vacuumed and rinsed. Now I'm going to clean it with toilet bowl cleaner. So, a lot of the DIY videos out there tell you you can use toilet bowl cleaner instead of using the hydrofluoric acid to etch the bathtub. Because I've already gone over the entire bathtub with sandpaper to remove the shine from the original finish of the bathtub, I think this should be sufficient to just make sure that the entire surface of the bathtub is etched so that the new, uh, the new epoxy paint will be able to adhere properly. So, here goes. Well, now that I have cleaned everything, I found another rust spot that I did not really see before. So, if I get the right angle here, you can see bubbling on the paint where the rust is sitting below and it is loose all along here. So I need to remove this loose portion and then sand the rust down below that so we can repair it. It's 
quite a bit, but it's loose here. Okay, so we're almost to the edge of the rough spot here. Right about here. And then it's extending down. Get it in the shot. Sorry. Probably goes all the way down to the bottom. <laughs> I hope not. Gravity. I don't want to do that much repairs, but you know, if you leave the rust, it's just going to cause more problems later. So. Mm -hmm. Just like me. <laughs> I cause more problems later. Oh, there you I go. think Looks that's like it. Heavy. Just a tiny bit here. Yeah, the rest I should be able to get with sandpaper. This part's loose. There we go. That should do it. Okay. So that is my progress so far. And I found a few more heavier rust spots. So I'm going to bring my Dremel kit and my drill with me next week so that I can remove all of the rust and then it will be ready for the patching compound. And because we're not the only ones that are working here while the owners are away, I've left a sign so that anyone else that is here, including the lady that comes to clean, knows not to use uh, or clean this bathtub and not to use any water on this bathtub. And our mystery critter turns out to be a hedgehog. So I went out at about 1.30 in the morning and found this little guy wandering around outside our bedroom window. I was able to get a couple of pictures of him, but I wasn't awake enough to think of taking video. So I will try to do that next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed our video. Take care and we'll see you guys next week. Okay, okay bye! bye.